no longer a drill. I think the results are actually out. People are saying that obviously they can't release our actual marks on time, but apparently the pass fail is out. I just really don't want to look. I'm so scared. Like I'm always really scared every year, but like this year I'm just... Okay, but what does this mean? So it says I passed. It says I passed. But I'm just really confused because... So I'm assuming that means I passed the entire thing. And I don't have to reset, I hope, otherwise this is going to be a really, like, horrible experience, but... Oh, I feel so much better. I genuinely thought I was going to, like... Especially after the SBA paper. I sat that paper on one hour's sleep. That was such a bad idea. I am never doing that again. And then the Oscars, I just didn't know what to think because they're so not transparent about the way that they mark these things. Like, I have no idea. I don't know why they've supposedly, like, staggered it like this, but someone... I don't know the pass marks, but someone has said that the results are out, so I'm gonna refresh. And my grandma's on the phone, so if you hear rustling in the background, I can't actually mute it. Um... That was such a lie. How did I get... <sighs> okay, well, first of all, the OSCE, I got 84.5 out of 100. And for the SBAs, which I'm honestly even more shocked about because the OSCEs, I'm like, I am so glad that I got over 70% in that overall. Like, in my SBAs, I got 82. They must have scaled this like right up because there is no way in hell I actually got 82% on that paper. What the hell? Why have I literally spent two weeks of my life in like dire stress mode? It's giving five year old. Yeah, yeah, cool. Anyway, I've got about a month off now, um, which is quite nice but also kind of sad because obviously our holidays are slowly dwindling. As I mentioned in a previous video, I'm going to Poland um, to see family, which is really exciting because I haven't seen them in years because of Covid, obviously. But other than that, I don't really know what to do with myself. And that is where Babbel comes in. Babbel is a platform which helps you learn new languages and it gets you speaking those languages as quickly as possible. I genuinely think I might end up moving out of the UK in the future, so learning some languages would actually be really helpful um, and I also just find it really fun like I really enjoy learning languages I don't know whether it's because I'm bilingual but I don't know it's just really fun and also my favorite thing is walking down the street and being able to like understand someone else's conversation in another language I just it's like a silent internal flex and I just love it so yeah anyway Moral of the story, I'm going to learn Spanish with Babbel. Babbel has 14 different languages to choose from. There's Spanish, obviously, French, Italian, Russian, Polish, so many different languages. So you have a good variety to pick from. And the amazing thing about Babbel is that they use a human-based approach. So they teach you how to have real life conversations, they teach you about culture, rather than just kind of spewing vocab at you because that is generally what happens most of the time when you learn languages. You end up just being able to say random words but you just could not have a conversation with anyone if you went to the country. Like you would just be like, oh tree. <laughs> which is not helpful. Babbel's lessons are created by over 150 language experts and they have both your native language and your target language in mind, which makes learning the new language all the more smooth. And the other thing I love about Babbel is that they have so many different ways to learn all in one place. So they have, you know, your standard like lessons in the app. They cover everything from grammar to vocab to listening and speaking. And they're really nice and short. You can do like 10 minutes a day and you can do more or less than this if you want to. You can set your preferences, which is amazing because you can fit them in to even your busiest days for the consistency. Eres Lucia. Soy Miguel. La llama. La llama. 
¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. Un poco cansado. Same. <laughs> Yo entiendo un poco de español, pero no puedo hablar español muy bien. Babbel also has an additional service called Live, which is basically live online language classes with world-class teachers, and you can do them from the comfort of your own home. And they also have podcasts which teach you things like more about the culture of the country, of the language that you're learning. Um, they have magazine articles, they have videos, games, and they're all just such fun ways of learning the language, especially if you don't necessarily feel up to maybe doing a lesson. You can just watch a video, and I also think those are sometimes the best ways to actually learn a language, like passively just taking it in. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend checking out Babbel. I will leave the link to the website in the description box. And if you click that link, you can get 30% off either six month, 12 month or lifetime access to Babbel, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, thank you so much to Babbel for working with me on this video and let's get back to it. A few days ago, I filmed talking about my exams. Now this was obviously what I didn't know if I had passed or failed, but this is genuinely how I felt my exams went. Um, so I'm going to let you enjoy that now. Um, if you're interested in hearing a bit more about what fourth year exams are like in Cambridge for medicine, then do keep watching. And if you also want to hear some of the stupid things I did, then it's entertainment. It's, I'm, I am here to entertain. Yeah, I sat my fourth year exams. I tried to film an exam diary like I did quite a few other years, but I, I was just... A mess like more of a mess than usual during exams and honestly the last thing I needed was to be filming so unfortunately I didn't film that even though that would have really been quite entertaining to be honest at least for me um, to watch but yeah safe to say those exams were one of my least favorite experiences ever I think nothing can prepare you these were our first ever Oscars and just nothing can prepare you for actually sitting that exam like our OSCEs this year had five communication skills stations and then five clinical stations. The clinical stations had one practical skills station um, and four examination stations. And then the communication skills were like histories and also breaking bad news, which I'm still really confused why we did this year because I don't know who would ask me to break any bad news to anyone in like fifth or sixth year. I feel like it's more of a sixth year skill, you know? But anyway. Moving on, um, I guess we can start off with the crushing, stomping, screaming elephant in the room that was the practical skills station because I, I just have a bone to pick with them. I'm angry. The more that I've thought about this, the more livid I'm getting because it's a new station. They brought it in this year and I just feel like it's not fair. Like it's not a fair station. It's not a fair representation of abilities because I have had cannulas signed off. Three cannulas I had signed off on actual people. Like I've put a cannula into a person before, but it is just not the same thing as doing it during an exam where someone's literally looking over your shoulder and you're already like really on edge and nervous and stressed because I'd had like my five communication skills stations before that. So I was already like, you know, tense and shaky and stressed. And then I was like, put a cannula in. And I kid you not, I was trying to draw up the saline flush and my hands were shaking so much I couldn't get the needle in the bottle. Like I was literally like, <laughs> and the woman was stood next to me watching me and she just must have thought I was not okay, which I wasn't okay. Um, but yeah, that whole station was just awful. I made so many more mistakes, which I didn't even realise I did at the time, but now looking back, I'm like, I actually think I failed just on, like, safety of practice. Um, which is really bad because I obviously wouldn't do that in real life. Like, it's just not the si- Anyway, safe to say, I'm not a happy bunny. I- I just- don't want to talk about it, I don't want to think about it. Um, the rest of the examination stations were okay, like, I, I'd learnt them, they were, some of them were actually fairly, fairly good, honestly, on my part. I, I, I rarely say things went well, but 
some of them were okay. The questions at the end, like the vibers, if I didn't know the answer, I was just not gonna get it because my brain was just not thinking. Like I was running on autopilot the entire time. If you asked me to like sit down and think about something to come up with an answer, like can't do that. Um, so that was just a bit annoying. And also I didn't finish my abdo exam. Um, I don't know how I so badly messed up the timing on that, but I just have no idea how these things are marked and like how bad, like I just, I'm confused. And also, on some of the stations, it was really weird because some of the examiners, I would just look at them whilst I was doing it, and they just weren't watching me at all, and I was like, okay. And then some just literally stood over me, like, looking over my shoulder, and I was just like, hmm, it's fine. I missed, I missed some bits. It's, fi it's fine. Um, the communication skills stations honestly weren't any better on the whole. Um, I didn't finish the Breaking Bad News station, and honestly, I think the patient the simulated patient really didn't like me like I was really trying but I was really stressed so it's hard to be really like lovely and like empathetic when you're like on the verge of a breakdown um there were some stations that were like fairly straightforward histories which were fine um and then there was one which they gave us a list of topics that were supposed to come up and this was not on the list. It was not on the list. And I got to it and I read the brief and I genuinely nearly went into cardiac arrest right there on the spot, like, not good. And I think the examiner could tell I was just like flustered and flounder. That's not a word. I don't think that means what I think in anyway. Yeah, it's on the whole, like, I said things that I really didn't mean to say. I think at one point I told the patient that I was gonna get them a sick note and I was like, you can't do that you can't do that because you're a med student but it was also confusing because on some stations you were a doctor i just did not enjoy my experience i feel like a few things could be worse than that as an exam to be honest but anyway you have to pass like three out of five stations for each one to pass the oski overall um which <laughs> is a bit concerning but anyway and then we also had an SBA paper on top of that. So the SBA is 40% and the OSCE was 60% of our overall mark for fourth year. This one was a train wreck. Like if the OSCE was bad, this was like 50 times worse. We had it a few days before the OSCEs and like I know I didn't revise enough, but I also thought that I'd covered the A-list conditions like to an okay degree. Boy, was I wrong. I think, honestly, I missed some of them. Like, I sorted the Excel spreadsheet by, like, letter, but I think I must have missed some of them because people were talking about conditions, and I was like, where, where was that on my list? Um, but yeah, no, I just, even the things that I did know, I struggled to answer the question because the questions that they asked were so weird. They, it was like half a pathology paper, to be honest. There was so much like gram staining of bacteria or like post-mortem findings. I'm um, like, I don't know whether I just didn't turn up to these sessions, but like I was under the impression that like, where were we taught post-mortem findings? That, like, I don't, I'm just I baffled, honestly speechless. I only really started being able to answer the questions like fully at about 90 out of 150 to be honest. Um, the first two thirds of that paper were just shocking. It's not really looking good on that front. I should have expected it really. It was nothing like past med and it was also nothing, this is where I get really annoyed, it was nothing like the very few practice questions that they gave us from previous year's exam papers. Like those made it seem like this paper would be manageable. It was not. They must have picked like the easiest, most like straightforward questions from those papers and just put them out. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more of what fifth year medicine is like in Cambridge, then do subscribe to my channel. The button is below this video and you can also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching again and I will see you in my next video. Bye!